He is truly one of, if not the, most popular mascot in sports. You'll definitely get no argument from Georgia fans who have been following his lead for over a half a century. Mark Rick might be the head coach of the Bulldogs, but everyone around Athens knows who the real top dog is. He's not Dave Baker, but here's Dave Baker. The rich history of the Ugga line is what has allowed his unmatched fame to grow in a mascot market where at least 30 other collegiate programs, including SEC foe Mississippi State, call themselves Bulldogs. The tradition, founded by Georgia alum Sonny Seiler, began in 1956 with a very unusual wedding gift. I was working in the athletic department when the dog was offered to us. We had just gotten married. And I thought, oh my lord, we can hardly feed ourselves, and now we're gonna have to feed a bulldog. And I'll have to confess, when I first saw him, I was very disappointed because he was young and gangly and didn't look anything like an English bulldog to me. But by September, he'd filled out and we were in business. Just on a lot, Cecilia made a red jersey out of a child's red t-shirt that she bought at J.C. Penney's and put a black felt G on it. Well, we took him to the game. We didn't take him on the field, took him up in the stands. And he received a lot of attention. One of the eyes young Ugga caught that day was that of Sports Information Director Dan McGill, the man assigned by Coach Wally Butts to find a replacement for the recently deceased mascot, a bulldog named Mike. Well, I went out and looked at him and told Coach Butts that uh, he looked like a good one to me. And I said, hey, and by the way, he's your, uh, he's the grandson of uh, your Rose Bowl mascot. And he said, well, sign him up. Each dog leaves a definitive legacy. Ugga One is remembered as the patriarch and for his longevity. His 10 years of service are the most of any mascot in school history. Ugga Two teamed with a young Vince Dooley to begin the turnaround of the Georgia program. He was also the first dog to get his house on the field, even if it was in the shape of a giant fire hydrant. Ugga Three finished strong. The Bulldogs' national championship clinching win in the 81 Sugar Bowl came in the final game of his career. He remains the only Ugga with a national title. Ugga Four had class. His appearance with Herschel Walker at the 1982 Heisman Banquet showed a level of sophistication previously thought to be impossible for a Bulldog. He went to the dinner. He had a black tie on, and he was well received by all the other uh, Heisman winners who gathered together in a small room before they go into the big banquet hall. And, I was impressed. I think they were impressed with Ugga. Ugga 5, he was a superstar. He nearly became the first mascot with an official tackle. For the ball's thrown right to the corner, right at Ugga. And watch Baker, he almost gets bit by Ugga. <laughs> Get away from me, man. It's tough enough to score without Ugga biting me. Robert caught the ball, ran into the end zone, and instead of turning and going back to his bench, he kind of turned and came at the dog. And it was just a deal where he came by fast, it was loud, it was crazy, and uh, Ugga tried to catch him. Ugga did not like this. They didn't like him scoring and him coming into our territory. So the Auburn fans uh, were, were, of course, uh, startled by it all. But the Georgia fans saw it as a great point of pride. He also landed on the silver screen in the major motion picture, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, working alongside the likes of Clint Eastwood, Kevin Spacey, and John Cusack. His finest moment, though, came in 1997, when he graced the cover of Sports Illustrated after being voted the nation's top mascot. I mean, that's what, uh, what, you, what you compete for, is to be the very best. So when you're the very best mascot in America and you're on the cover of Sports Illustrated, it doesn't get any better than that. August 6th passing on June 27th came one month short of his 10th birthday. He's the biggest Ugga to date. He'll be remembered more for his mass and affinity for TV cables 
but no Georgia fan will forget that he has more wins to his name than any of his predecessors. The second longest tenure in Georgia's mascot history. His chapter in the Ugga story remains a strong addition to a legacy that has already redefined what makes a great mascot. Ugga one is like Ugga six. It's a bulldog, it's white, and it's from the same lineage. So uh, I think that in itself makes, makes it unique because there are other uh, schools with bulldogs and they're all great mascots. But I think the distinctive part of Georgia's mascot is this great succession of others who's passing the torch from one to the other now for, for six generations and that covers a whole lot of Georgia people. As for the Seiler family, they're thrilled that most Georgia fans can't remember a time without an Ugga between the hedges. But as long as we're around and we're able to continue to serve the university with these dogs, we intend to do it. We are proud of the tradition. We do everything we can to keep it on a very high plane to uh, let him serve with dignity, and I think we've accomplished that. With the death of August 6, Georgia sports will begin another era when Mark Rick's Bulldogs take the field on August 30th against Georgia Southern. August 6 was interred on June 30th with his predecessors, the Mausoleum in Sanford Stadium. But before the Ugga 7 era begins, we'll pay tribute to August 6 as football Saturdays in the South.